Welcome to Behind the Audition podcast with your host, Kurt Hilton. Listen in on interviews with voiceovers, filmmakers, producers, animators, and much more. Kurt, a voice actor himself, will give insider tips to the business, talk with guests about how they got into the business, and be sure to stay tuned to the end of the podcast when he challenges his guests with a pop-up audition. Now it's time for Behind the Audition podcast. Here's Kurt Hilton. Welcome back to another episode of Behind the Audition podcast. On this episode, I spoke to the amazing voice actor, Rob Marrera. We talked about how he became an actor at a young age, being a bilingual voice actor and coach, and how to handle burnout and not to throw in the towel. We also talked about a bunch of other fun topics. So sit back and enjoy another episode of Behind the Audition podcast. And coming to the show, the man himself, one of my favorites, Rob Marrera. How are you doing today? Pretty good, my man. Happy to be here. Thanks for having me. Oh, man. It's so good to have you on. Um, I, we were talking before the show. Um, my OCD didn't work today. Uh, <laughs> usually, I'm the one who has everything figured out, and I missed our earlier call today. So I even called myself out, so I'm going to do it right now. <laughs> Thank you so much for giving me some more of your time today. You are uh, doing some very cool projects, and thanks for giving me some more of your time today. Yeah, my pleasure. My pleasure. I ha- I'm, I'm glad we're able to link up anyway. Absolutely. So, um, to start things off, you know, a lot of uh, people that I talk to, I have people reach out every now and then talking about wanting to get into this uh, crazy world of voice mm-hmm. acting. Um, what, what did it for you? What made you want to get into uh, th- this world of voice acting? Uh, it was it was interesting. I mean, I had already been an actor for a while. Uh, I was acting since like junior high. So I was I was like 12, 13 when the acting bug kind of crept in. And uh, I went to high school for performing arts. I went to college for performing arts. Uh, And then I did a lot of theater. I did theater for about 10 years um, in New York. And um, at some point, you know, while you're doing that, you know, you, you, you become the starving artist. I had to get a real job, you know, so I had a regular nine to five office job, which, you know, while it sucks, day jobs suck. um, It was great because it it gave me time to be able to, uh, you know, still do rehearsals and things like that. Uh, A friend of mine, an actress, she actually, um, did voiceover in one of the shows that I was doing and I asked her about it. You know, I saw her Facebook post. I was like, Hey, what, what's voiceover? What does that concern? Like, how'd you get into that? And uh, she rolled out the red carpet for me, told me everything to do. She was actually, mind you, this was me just starting out. She told me straight up, get yourself a microphone, get yourself a space. Like this was eight years ago. And then she was telling me, you need to have your own space to record. So uh, so that was really awesome. So I ended up doing that. And um, yeah, I did a couple workshops just to see how it was. Had a bit of a knack for it. Um, it was nice because it didn't matter what I look like anymore. I could record for whatever I wanted. And um, yeah, the ball never stopped rolling. You know, I, you, you talk about, you know, a lot of voice actors, they, before they get into this role, they got to have a full time job. <laughs> what yeah. what was it that you did before you got into this? I always like to ask. Oh, that's a good question. Well, I at the at the time I was a operations manager for a call center that did a uh, uh, wholesale travel, basically. Mm-hmm. So we sold travel, uh, like hotel sightseeing tours and such, to travel agents to sell to their clients, basically. Uh-huh. Uh, so I I helped manage the call center, and then uh, after that, then I became a a business dev- or a key account manager. Mm-hmm. So basically I went to travel agencies pitching the business that I worked for. So I, that, that was like the last thing that I did before I ended up jumping ship and doing a uh, voiceover full time. So do, do you, were you a class clown? Cause that was a total class clown in high school. <laughs> Completely. And, I was a stri- and it was one of those, I was like one of those popular people that wasn't necessarily popular, you know, like, yeah. you, you know, like, like there's the popular people who was like, well, everybody knows who that guy is. That's so-and-so. But then there's that person like, oh yeah, I know Rob. And for some reason, everybody can say, oh mm-hmm. yeah, I know Rob. I was that person. But you're the cool popular guy. And that's the <laughs> thing like, you know, they needed us class clowns because we're the one that made their, you know, repetitive days every day in class and school oh, yeah. fun. You know, we, we, we would get, we'd take our chance and get in trouble. Yeah. And it's talk true. our way out of, uh, with the principal. Look, man, I was making them laugh. I don't want to see you here and again. So. <laughs> <laughs> well, it was funny. I think the, the funniest was fifth grade. My fifth grade teacher, man, she could not stand me. And it wasn't because I wasn't like intelligent or anything. She knew I was intelligent. She knew mm-hmm. I was very, very smart. I was very sharp. Uh-huh. But I remember my mom coming in and she was like, I can't sit your son anywhere. 
And then oh she was like, gosh. what do you mean? She was like, he makes friends with everybody. He makes friends everywhere he sits and he's a disruption. And it's awful because <laughs> he's very intelligent, but he's very distracting. I was, I looked at my mom, I'm like, I don't know what I'm gonna do. I'm just social. I'm social. I can't help it. Oh, it was gosh. so funny, man. She could not stand me. That is <laughs> I, awesome. I cracked jokes about everything. It was, uh, it was hilarious. It's my so, badge of honor. <laughs> you know what? What's the my my next question is what's the misconception of voice actors? We, we always you, you hear things. Mm. What, what is one you hear? Um, that we all do cartoons. Right. And I think that's the biggest yeah. one. You mm -hmm. know, it's always, it, you know, I, I feel like that's always the first question when somebody tells, you know, when you tell somebody your voice actor, oh, really? Oh, do a voice. It's like, yeah, not all of us do voices, you know, like mm -hmm. not to say that we can't, but right. that's not probably how we're making our money. You know, right. <laughs> like right. I, I, I have to burst that bubble really quick. And I tell people, yeah, you're kind of hearing it right now for free. This is it. <laughs> this is what this is what I do. <laughs> so you live on both sides of the field. You have, you know, the coaching side as well as being yes. a voice actor. And, yeah. and also you you're bilingual. So you can teach, you know, you you have this language and this language. Mm -hmm. How, what is it like being on both sides? It's in, it's interesting because some things uh, do cross over and other things are very different and fairly nuanced, especially like when something as simple as like fast food, like fast food commercials in English are so different than they are in Spanish. Like what they're looking for is not really the same, you know, while in American, they're really, really pushing that cool conversational, you know, friendly, uh, you know, a uh, fr friendly, you know, kind of vibe. Mm -hmm. when it comes to Spanish, it's a little more elevated. It's a little bit more, uh, it's, it's a little more obviously commercial, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So yeah, it's, it's really interesting to see that in terms of coaching. Um, it does also become a little bit different because if you're coaching somebody who is, who only, you know, could probably work mostly in the Spanish realm, then, you know, it becomes, the, the kind of thing where, you know, you have to teach them just that style. If they're going to be a good bilingual, you know, actor, then, well, sorry about that. Sorry, no my, my children are, ve are being <laughs> very loud right now. <laughs> Hold on. No worries. What, what happened? No worries. No worries. But, um, yeah, so, so it's really interesting because, like, you know, if it is just Spanish, then at least you could just focus on that. If they are bilingual, then you are kind of treading both of those sides and there are things that are different and things that you highlight would be different and how you say things is different so it's almost like you kind of got to learn double the work Absolutely. uh you know so it, it it is very tricky i've been fortunate enough to do a lot in english and a lot in spanish so i've, I've been able to understand the nuances between both uh but be between both cultures and mm -hmm. even then like it's even different because like new york uh, if you're looking for somebody Hispanic who's like East Coast New York, it's very different than if you're looking right. for somebody who's Hispanic down South or right. Hispanic on the West Coast. Right. Um, so, yeah, it's really interesting. There's a lot, a lot of differences. I mean, it's the same in English, too. You know, if you're looking for somebody who's more who has more of that, you know, slightly Southern accent, it's it's that same kind of thing, because it, the difference would be like I'm looking for that East Coast sound or that more Southern twang right. sound. The right. difference is I'm looking for that Dominican, Puerto Rican kind of accent right. and and in the South, I'm looking more for that Mexican accent. Same thing right. with the West Coast. So yeah, Absolutely. it's it's the same kind of idea. It's just all the cultures are different. Just you know, if you're, at that point, you're dealing with like country differences yeah, as opposed I mean, to like just state differences. Yeah, yeah, I, uh, I totally it's agree. Wild, I, I agree. And and you know, and with voiceover, I think it's getting a lot more diverse. Wouldn't you say? I'm like, oh, it's, it's so great. Diverse. And, and, and I think it's great. You know, seeing that on TV, here on the mm -hmm. radio. And it's, you know, you know, having more conversations as a, as a world and everything. And as for you as a coach, you know, dealing with two different languages, having newbies come in, what, mm. what is your, what is your coaching method to them? What do you recommend to them? Cause then if you're here, I'm an aspiring voice actor and that drives, yeah. that drives everybody nuts. Like, no, you're a voice actor. You, <laughs> you are I'm not, no I'm not an aspiring burger flipper. Yeah. I'm, I'm a burger flipper. You're, you're it. You're it. You're not aspiring to be anything. Yes. So what do you tell your, uh, your voice actors? Well, um, you know, I, I always break it down where I tell them, I'm like, listen, I'm not the end all be all. You know, so what I know is from my own experience and my experience is incredibly unique. Um, it's very actor heavy. Um, uh, so 
there are a lot of techniques. I have a lot of shortcuts to get you to places so that right. you feel certain emotions and tones. I highly recommend doing more than getting info from more than one coach. I always say that right off the bat. You will need to have more than one coach, whether I, that be me or not. It's cool. It, one of them. Um, it's cool with me. Um, but I definitely suggest getting information from several sources because that's how you're going to be able to piece together your own style. That's the only way it's going to happen. I always had several acting coaches. I always had several voice and diction coaches. coaches. I think everybody's training should kind of be the same way because you're going to lift certain things that just make sense to you mm -hmm. from different people. You're never going to get all the answers from one person. There's going to be something that they're going to say that you're not going to jive with. And then you're going to be missing out on something. You may get that information from somebody else. So I always say swim around, get as many coaches as you can. Um, that's the best way to go about it. Um, I do suggest, you know, if, you could some acting training is always helpful uh improv training is always helpful will i say that those are deal breakers absolutely mm -hmm. not i don't think you need them they absolutely help though um now i am somebody who's trained for you know over a decade or so so um i i'm i'm biased in in mm -hmm. that i think acting does play a very large part in it but do i think it's necessary absolutely not i've seen so many radio djs have incredibly incredibly good careers who have zero acting experience mm -hmm. a lot of acting experience uh, uh, or talent is raw mm -hmm. so a lot of that you may just learn on the fly you may just learn on the job which is okay mm -hmm. it's okay to learn on the job you're not going to have all the answers when you go about it um and also never wait to be perfect because you never will be and if you always wait for your website to be perfect, for your demos to be perfect, for your marketing to be perfect, for X, Y, and Z to be perfect, you're never going to do anything. You're never going to get off the ground. And then by the time that you do, you've let so many other voice actors get ahead of you in the game already that you're just letting yourself fall further and further behind than where you are. I say jump in with both feet first and start learning. It's a trial by fire kind of profession. You have to learn on the job. Absolutely. And what would you tell yourself now, what you know now? Or what would you tell yourself Ooh. back then, what you know now? Oh, man. You know, it's, it's funny. I always thought about that. Um, you know, how could, how could I have sped up my own career path um, had I, you know, known then what I know now? But truth be told, um, I know what I would say, um, but I'll, I'll get to, my, to, to my, my, my current point in a second. But what I would say is... Uh, patience is massive um if you're going to do it then you have to do it full throttle there is no half playing this game you really got to go into it both feet first and don't think that you're going to make it if you keep doing it you just have to know it I know <clears throat> I'm going to get where I need to be if I keep doing this. You have to know that. You have to breathe it. You have to, it has to be that important. It's as important as air. Mm -hmm. If you don't do it, then you'll suffocate. You just got to know I, I'm going to get this done and this is how I'm going to do it. Never be scared to invest in yourself. No money is a waste of money. Everything Absolutely. is an investment into what you do. So there is no waste. There is no, oh, I just waste it. No, there's no such thing as that. It's always investing in yourself, always. Even if you have six mics in your closet at the end of the day, which I do, those were investments. They got mm -hmm. me to my current setup. They got me right. to where I am. Right. All those moving blankets that I have and those PVC pipes that sit on top of my booth, those are all investments. That's where I was. Those are all, you know, relics of where I've been. That's a story. Yeah, that's my career. That's literally yeah. my career in bits and pieces that I've broken down that were the foundation on what I built my booth or my microphones or my desk on top of. Yeah. You know, that's what they are. Right. All investments, never a waste. So never be scared to waste money on yourself. Um, with that being said, um, I've always thought about that. Man, it would. I, I really wish I had known that when I was grinding as a, as a theater actor. But truth be told, um, there is a maturity that you have to have as a person and as a creative that you need to get to. Some people will get to it faster than others, but there is a certain maturity that you have to reach that will allow you to take this 
seriously mm-hmm. as a job, as a career, as a mm-hmm. profession, so that when you do it, you're doing it wholeheartedly and you're not taking the losses to heart. You know it's a part of the process. Right. So you're able to move on and continue forward. Had I done that then, I would not have appreciated it as much as I do now. I think I was too young still as an actor and as a person. I don't think I had the maturity level as a, as a person and a, and, and a creative to appreciate what I do now, nor to put in the time that I do now. Um, as an adult, that became more apparent. Uh, I feel like I had to be humbled. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think that was a big one. Actors have natural egos. Uh, especially if they come from, you know, prominent schools or pro- popular schools that people, you know, you, you name drop and people go, whoa, you went there. Right. There's an ego that gets yep. created in your mind. And I had to humble myself and realize that I'm not better than anybody else. I am just another actor. But, but I will never, ever not say that I am a fantastic actor. That I know. I am yeah. a damn good actor. And I was very confident in that. Um, but I had, I had to humble myself to know that there are others better than me. And I learned to learn from others in what they did and how they did things. I love it. I love it. And that's great feedback because you know, there's the, that, uh, a lot of people don't realize the, the burnout phase. Yeah, um, it's huge. I've hit it many times I've hit yeah. it where it's like, uh, absolutely. And I've, I've talked to many, you know, I'm not doing name drop, but talked to big time voice actors who hit the things like I'm about to throw in the towel. I'm mm-hmm. ready to throw it in because, you know, it the happens. game changes with, uh, there's so many different uh, freelance uh, platforms out there. There's yeah. paid plays that are charging cheaper. There's, you know, this, this and that. And they hit like this road of, I'm not getting what I used to. And so mm-hmm. they're like getting ready to throw in the towel. I'm like, no, don't, yeah. don't. What, what do you do to overcome burnout? Because it's real. Like any other job, we love this. We, we will do this 24 hours a day, but what is that yes. burnout? Um, I guess shield you use not to get burnt out. Yeah, when I start feeling that, when I, especially when it comes to auditions, because I get a lot of auditions just through, you know, on any given day. I mean, on a really busy day, I can easily see three auditions hit my, uh, 30 auditions hit my inbox. That's in a day. You know, some people are lucky to see that in a week, let alone more than that. But uh, I could get 20 to 30 in a, in a day. And I'm just like, whoa, like, where do you mm-hmm. start? Right. And then the thing is that you do it, you hammer them out. And then the next day, boom, you got another 15 in your, in your inbox. And you're like, oh my God, man, this, it just never stops. But when that happens, uh, I take a break. I just literally turn the lights off in my booth, shut everything down. I'm like, you know what? I, I need to unplug. I need to get out of voiceover brain. Voiceover brain does not like what's happening right now. It's like, mm-hmm. it can't deal. Mm-hmm. So I shut everything down. Uh, I check the deadlines first on like, what's what? And I'm like, okay, I can afford like three hours. So I'm mm-hmm. just going to stop and I'm going to do something not voiceover related. There you go. I'm going to play a video game. I'm going to build a model kit. Uh, I always have several hobbies kind of yeah. <clears throat> in the background ready to go. So if I want to pick up a video game, I have games that I, I'm in the middle of playing that I could just jump into. I got model kits that take me several weeks to finish. So I'll jump back in, do a couple more pieces, just anything to bring my brain out of that. And then when I feel like I've done enough, you know, uh, you know sometimes I might even play with my girls, see, see, you know, see what they're up to. Once I feel like, okay, I, I don't feel it anymore then I'll jump back and then I'll go into it. What's also helped too is that I do, I work out Monday to Friday um, at night. I, do, I work out for two, three hours. That has probably been the greatest unplugging ever because when you're doing that, you really are just focusing on that. Absolutely. Get out if you're not house. focused on lifting your weights, they're going to fall on your head. Um, right. So you right. have to be focused. You have no choice. And I do kickboxing. So I have to pay attention or I'm getting kicked in the face. That so, is awesome. You know, so like you, you, you literally have to transport your brain to these places that when you're done and you come back home, you're like, "Woo, all right, I'm ready to tackle something new. So that's also helped probably the, more than anything at this point has really just been working out. So would you say being a coach too, would you say to those, uh, <clears throat> cause I've actually come back. I talked to Alfonso Lugo. He's a mm, great coach and yeah. uh, amazing voiceover. I actually, we, we talked one day and he gave me some great advice. Cause I came to a point where I was like, I'm, I don't know what I want to do. If I want to do IVR, if I want to do, mm. if I want to do commercial, if I want to do video games, this. Yeah. So I chose three. He said, okay. and, he, and he gave me a strategy, choose what you want to do and nice. stay with it. That's why he does this commercial, you know, his music and stuff. Do you think right. choosing too many uh, categories 
mm. can could burn you out quicker. Because you see um, a lot of voiceovers, you know, they'll put like, I can do IVR, I can do e-learning, I can do this, I can do that. <laughs> I can, it's like, do you want to do that much? Do you know what I'm right. saying? Because you could get big and then be like, yeah. okay, I got 15 games coming out, but then I got to worry about this two hour narration video, which that that takes a lot of time. If they need the revisions, Absolutely. you got to do it. So what, what would you recommend? Yeah. So it's funny. Cause like, you know, I always recommend doing what you feel. It's like, don't, don't take on more than your brain's real estate can handle. Ultimately, you know, for me as an actor, I mean, I've done most every type of voiceover at this point. The only things I really haven't done has been probably like movie trailers, uh, maybe like one or two other things, but I've done everything else. I've done medical stuff. I've done VR, video games, animation, anime, uh, commercials is what I mostly do. Audio books, audio descriptions, IV, literally every, yeah. I've done yeah. all, almost all of it. And I can comfortably say that. Um, but in being open to doing everything, I've also learned which ones I don't like. Um, yeah. And I think that's helped because then I know which ones to avoid because if you pigeonhole yourself, or I don't want to say pigeonhole yourself, but if let's say you focus yourself on just a couple of them and you kind of don't focus on the others, you might be closing out opportunities on uh, genres that you might actually do really well at. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, because when I first came into in, into doing voiceover, old, you know, like 90% of everybody else, I want to do animation. I want to do video games. You know, right. who doesn't, right? Right. Um, that's what I wanted to do. Uh, but I ended up signing with an agent within two weeks of wanting to do voiceover and having a demo. So I was like, all right, I'm just going to audition for whatever they send me. That's an right. that's cool. And I ended up figuring out very quickly. I'm really great at commercial. Um, and I didn't fight it. You know, I could have fought it and be like, no, but I want to be an animation guy. That's what I want to focus on. I could have did that, but that, I probably could have stunted my own success. Truth right. be told, had I wanted to only focus on what I wanted. Uh, instead, I left myself open and then I kept doing commercial and I continued to do commercial. And I probably didn't do my first animation until probably three or four years later. But at that time, I was already very well established um, because I did so many commercials. So when the animation opportunities presented themselves, they were already kind of like, oh, yeah, you've been doing a lot of stuff. I'm surprised you haven't done any anime. Yeah, right. come on in. Because I built a reputation for myself already. There the studios knew who I were. Uh, the engineers knew who I was. So having me now come into things like that, it was easy to recommend me because they already knew that I did great work in other things that they've seen me in that's a recommend me was like a no-brainer and that's how i ended up getting a lot of my connections that brought me into the animation and anime world um so i would say know what you want to tackle keep the opportunities open uh just so that you can let them in because you really never know what it is that you're going to excel at um, cause some people are just fantastic at anime and that's what they do. And they build their careers off of that. Mm -hmm. Some people are fantastic at audiobooks, and they build their careers off of that. Right. Um, and so on and so forth. You know, you, you never know if you, it, you never know where you might actually land and find that success. Cause not everybody finds it anywhere. I swore I was going to be an animation actor and I'm very much a commercial actor who does animation. Do you remember your, <laughs> do you remember yeah, your you know. first commercial? Uh, yeah, yeah. My well, it was funny. The first thing that I recorded was uh, it was like an internal kind of demo. Yeah. Um, and it was for Maker's Mark. Oh, and cool. Looking for a George Clooney type. Oh, mind you, this was eight years ago. I was thirty nice. years old. I was like, I do not have a George Clooney voice, but okay. I did what I what I figured. What it sounded like. You, you know you, what you, a George I, Clooney. I'm not gonna hear what was the be? Yeah. Not like you an know? impression, but like, was it like a. Was it like his uh, it was, commercial or like it was like a very cool, yeah, because they were like talking about like, you know, uh, uh, you know, we've had our breweries for over 17 years, blah, oh, you, blah. you know, just like really <laughs> cool, really like poured it on the, yeah. the cool, the schmooze. Yeah. And I ended up booking it and I did like five demos for them. So I was like, oh, that's cool. But in terms of my first com like big commercial, it was uh, to be the voice of the push pop for the push pop. Uh, oh, my God. Candy. And I've been their voice since then. I've, I'm still their voice. I still that is awesome. as pu pushy the push pop. That's the oh character. my gosh. That and is I've, awesome. And I've been him always. Yeah. And I'm still him. I'm him. I, I was, I've, I've been, I started just in North America and in, uh, in the United States, but now I voice him in Canada too. So yeah, it's pretty cool. 
so so with your on stage experience and you mm-hmm. get into the world of voice acting what's the big difference do you see between being a voice actor and on stage actor Ooh, uh you enunciate way less okay. uh you can't project but <clears throat> in losing the projection you're able to do so much more with your voice which is great because yeah. my natural voice tends to be right in this pocket. You know, mm-hmm. it's not necessarily high. It's definitely not low per se. Right. Um, but because I can lower my voice um, and, and drop my voice into my chest, <clears throat> it allows me to do a much deeper sound. Uh-huh. And sometimes that really works. Yeah. You know? So I'm able to do stuff like that. Um, and that's really helped me out because you're, you're depending on how you stand, how you sit. Um, that's another thing, big faux pas that people say, don't sit when you record. I sit for everything. So boom, yeah. yes, you can. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I record for everything, everything I do sitting down, animation, anime, video games, whatever. I'm in my, yeah. I'm on my butt. I'm on my throne. Um, but, um, yeah, so that, that's probably the biggest thing is that you have more control of your voice. Um, when, when you're, when you're doing voice acting over uh, theater, um, that and the fact that there really is no saying who you can be you know when you get when you get uh you know a cast of characters for a video game if you feel you could deliver it whether it be the lead you know the tank the healer the doctor whatever whether he's 20 years old or 40 years old if your yeah. boy, your range is that big you can go for it and possibly get it if you have a believable enough performance. And I think that's probably the biggest and most rewarding part of being a voice actor over theater. Theater really hinders you. You have, you have that, uh, that very good personality. I was talking to, I was reaching out to Melissa Medina and she, you know, she highly (laughs) recommended you and everything. And, and um, I, I think as a, we all work together and we all, uh, we all collaborate and talk to each other in social media. We always have each Mm. other's back and, you know, what what would you say the world of voice acting on social media? Do you think we all get along more than any other profession? Like than yeah. actors and stuff like that? I, mean, I mean, especially as actors. Yeah, as actors, we totally get get along with each other so much more. I mean, it's it's insane. You know, I remember going to those casting calls, you know, as a you know, live actor, and just you know, the looks that you would give each other was like uh, you know, like, man, that guy looks like me. He's probably going to get the part before yeah. I do. Or and I don't know what this guy's done, but I'm hearing his cold read and it sucks. I'm totally going to beat that guy. <laughs> There's this natural, like, really, like, aggro uh, thing about, you know, it, you know, um, in-person mm-hmm. castings. Not in-person, but, mm-hmm. like, uh, on camera or theater. <clears throat> because you, you know you can only go for this role. Right. You know? Mm-hmm. Um. And it's hopefully it's that it's you look better than that guy. Hopefully you walk in before they do or whatever the case Mm -hmm. may be. You know, that very much is there. Like there's this fierce competition while in voiceover, the competition, like it's, it's not even like it doesn't exist. Like it's that we know we're going for the same role, but there's no ego towards it. Cause we know like, Hey, listen, the voice that fits is the one that's going to get it. And that is what it is. Right. And it's so acceptable and it's so cool that that exists Mm -hmm. and we're so incredibly incredibly helpful um everybody's looking to help everybody and that's such 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 a beautiful thing um it can be dangerous as well um because everyone is so willing to give of their own experiences uh there's a lot of opinions that are thrown as fact and that could be dangerous because for somebody new it may be hard to sift through what is opinion and what is fact um you know not only that but sometimes opinions are formed on others opinions right uh you know uh, you know oh the neumann tlm 103 that's the microphone everybody needs that it's like did you ever get one right have you ever used one so then i know that that's the one because 19 other people said so that doesn't mean it's true you need to find out what those truths are for yourself you know um everybody said for animation you know get a t103 get the one the 103 is the one to get and i said no i'm getting a u87 when i get a u87 <laughs> and i tell an engineer that you right. have to hear their tone change when i say yeah i got a u87 they go "Ooh, that is awesome you got a, you got a nice you got a nice mic i'm like yeah <laughs> do 
<laughs> Thank God I didn't listen to everybody, you know? <laughs> Absolutely. Um, but it's one of those things, you know, you, you, you do, there is, a, you know, a lot of sifting through stuff. You have to take most everything with a grain of salt. Um, you know, and it's not so much that you shouldn't trust anybody. Mm -hmm. It's just that know that a lot that's out there is, is based on opinion. Uh, I built my personal business on my gut. And I always tell people your gut knows what's right. Um, right. And even if you make the wrong decision, at least you'll learn something. And absolutely that's good. That's yeah. a good thing. It's not a bad thing. You'll learn something. It was a mistake. You know that that's not what you should do. And then you move forward and folks are so scared of making mistakes because they feel their career ending mm -hmm. really not unless you're egregiously being a, a completely terrible human being right nothing is really career ending right uh you know it might stall you for a sec and right. but nothing is going to completely damage your career i don't want to post something like this with my brand on it because this and the other just do it see what happens worst case scenario a couple of people be like oh yeah that didn't land okay <laughs> then you shift and you go to the next one right it is what it you have to be you have to be willing to try it you have to listen to your gut your gut knows better than anybody else because you know, you could hear great opinions and then you just may not feel comfortable following through on that. So then why do it? I mean, right. that makes no sense. Um, so, yeah. So I, I love our community. Our, our community is fantastic. I think it's huge. It's, it's incredibly helpful. It's the love is insane. The positivity is astronomical. It's literally through the charts at how positive people are. Um, for the most part, I'd say that's about 80% of us. Cause there are 20% that are either people that are very well established that, you know, have a little snark towards mm -hmm. the new people because right. they know, they know, you know, there's a lot of new talent coming in that may take work away from them. It's going to happen. And that's understandable. I get it. I get understand right. that, you know, if they don't want to be helpful. It's cool. You don't have to be, it's not, it's not part of the, you know, mm -hmm. being part of the VA community. Um, but you know, with that, with that help and, and, and uh, the opinions and the assistance, uh, you know, you just have to be wary of all the information that you get. You have to be able to sit down with someone um, who is established and be able to, and, and tell them, listen, this is everything that I've heard. What do you think? Mm -hmm. And get their opinions. You know, you need to find a, a nice tight knit network that, you know, you can trust, you know, the, the big overall community is fantastic, but you do need a small contingent of three or four actors that are like your business conciliaries, you know? Absolutely. The people that I'm going to bounce everything off of, you need like <laughs> two or three folks, yeah. you know? Yeah. Um, and you find these people by speaking to the overall community. You'll see who it is that you respond with. They may be doing exactly what you're doing uh, or going after the same things that you are. So those are people you're going to want to you know, keep close to you because that's who you want to replicate. You want to be kind of like that. Um, or you just like the way they are. Just get a good vibe, whatever the case may be. Find, find that tiny tight knit network that you can bounce all that information around of, and then you'll be able to come up with your decisions from there. But ultimately choice is yours. You know? Absolutely. That's a great advice. And on that note, it's time to have fun. You ready? No, oh, let's do it. Ready for the audition challenge? Okay. Yeah. All right. <laughs> You're gonna, so this one's gonna be fun and I'll explain why I did this afterwards. So I sent you, oops, hang on, make sure. I, okay. I sent you it in the chat box. You'll yeah. see your script. Did you see it? <laughs> this is great. <laughs> oh, this is great. All right, all right. Cool. So I got you uh, a script in the chat box and whenever yes. you're ready, go ahead and take it away. <laughs> all right. <clears throat> They are back. The all new eight track player with detachable AC power cord to load you 20 D batteries. Damas y caballeros, les obsequiamos el portable 8, el nuevo reproductor portátil de 8 pistas, nuevo de Radio Shack. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> See, I had to throw you for a loop because I know you like do, you're bilingual and you could do both. That's and I'm like, good, you know what? Man. So you're the first one to do both on <laughs> the Audition Podcast Challenge. So that was awesome. You know, um, I, I've been watching, I just finished Stranger Things. I don't know if you've been watching that. Oh, I am, yeah, yeah. I love 80s mov movies. I'm lo I love yes. the nostalgic feel. And I've been talking to people about it. I'm ready for season four. I, I mean, just, mm -hmm. it brought me back. I'm an 80s kid, man. And it, Same. And it just... I, when they're, I was at the pool yesterday and I was talking to my wife and I saw two kids or three kids riding bikes outside doing that. I'm like, oh, you don't see that anymore. I remember no. I tell my mom, peace out. I'm gone. Jumped on the bike. I went, yeah. went to 7-Eleven, got a big gulp, 
bazooka bubble gum that I learned from, you know, got from mowing the grass and yeah. everything else and uh, grab a Slurpee and play pinball. Yeah, man. Now you have to watch kids play. You have to, man, you can't, you can't, it's, it's so crazy. And watching that, I'm like, mm-hmm. I told my wife, I'm like, this is just amazing. It's yep. an amazing show. So, I, and, and voice actors are doing the, the screams and all that stuff. I was like, oh my gosh, that would be a great role, wouldn't it? Yeah. Oh man. It would be so awesome. I'd, I'd love to do, to get something like that, even to just ADR stuff for Netflix. I haven't done, I haven't done, uh, actually have I done? No, no, I did, I did ADR for some Amazon stuff, but not, nothing for Netflix yet. Um, that is awesome. But I know they do some stuff here in New York. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, I know, I know they do some stuff. So I don't know. That I is awesome. I haven't, haven't, haven't found, haven't found that, uh, that thread just yet. <laughs> so, so is there anything big coming out you want to tell us about? That you Ooh. can tell us about a lot of times they're like i can't tell you but something you can tell us about yeah so i mean the latest was uh i i'm, I'm the voice of norton 360 so if anybody knows that uh you know the, the antivirus i voice all of their stuff right now um so that's radio streaming youtube i mean if you see nice. it, if you see it that that's me um nice. <laughs> which is funny because i see it so much now i'm kind of like oh i'm sick of me that's funny because <laughs> that ad comes up so frequently but the, the, that's the latest you know big one at least the latest big right. fish um there is one game that is going to be coming out uh later this year uh from a developer called nut farm games it's called uh, children of the eclipse uh, i play the main character in that game um, so that's actually really cool. So that'll be coming out later this year. And um, the latest game to come out that did feature me actually with a couple of characters uh, was uh, Earth Defense Force World Brothers. Really fun game. Uh, it's Minecraft s- style. Like it, it's all like chunky, blocky, 8-bit. It looks really cool. It's very fun. My kids love, cool. love, love, love the game. And it plays really well. Uh, but there's like 80 different characters that you can select to put into your team uh i voice four of the characters very cool uh, which is really fun uh because you create characters of four so my daughter uh, my five-year-old she's obsessed because she plays the game and she's like i just want to play as all of you daddy I'm oh like, man that that's you you, you that's when you know i made it huge made milestone it. Yeah, yeah it was big yeah. it was funny because i've had milestones like that i remember my first milestone when it first started i was like man i just want my kids to hear me on tv yeah that's all I want. And yeah. then my oldest at the time, she was like, uh, she was probably like eight or nine. She was like, dad, is that you? And I ran into the living room and I was like, what? And it was the push pop commercial. And she oh, was like, is that's that you? That I'm like, awesome. yeah, that's me. She was yeah. like, that's so cool. So like, that was the first big one. And then the next big one was being able, you know, to have my kids play a game with me in it. And now she's playing a game with four of me in it, doing four totally different voices. So it's really cool because she was like, these are all you? I'm like, yeah, you know? Oh, my gosh. (laughs) Yeah, so that's really cool. Very cool. Well, you know, it's been a pleasure having you on here. We're going to have to have a part two because there's more questions that uh, I'd love to hear. it's, it's, It's always it's always amazing to get the opportunity. That's why I made this podcast. I know there's a billion of them out there, but this is something for me as well as for those that, you know, that I speak with that, to mm-hmm. learn new things about it. And that's what it's all about. It's not about, I got a podcast. It's about helping others learn. And I think that's, my, my guests have it. actually helped so many people. They've people have reached out and said, man, that's helped me. Thank you. And oh, so I want to all you guys, thank you for helping me help people too. So Rob Marrera, thank you so much for being on Behind the Audition Podcast. You rock, man. My pleasure, brother. For more information about Rob Marrera, check him out on his website at robmarreravo.com. Thanks for listening in on Behind the Audition Podcast, made possible by Hilton Productions. If you need a male or female voiceover, contact us at hiltonproductions.com. Hilton Productions, let our voices do the selling.